Welcome to the Electronics Tools for Beginners video series. I'm going to be doing a video every single day, so make sure you subscribe to make sure you don't miss those. Also be a playlist down in the description and at the end of the video as well to go and watch more of the video series. So make sure you check them out. So in today's video I'm going to talk about power supplies. I've got a couple of power supplies sitting on my desk here. There's different types of power supplies. There's switch mode power supplies. There's linear power supplies. There's even battery systems where you can use a battery to power something. Instead, you don't have to use a power supply. You can use a battery, which is a really clean supply to use if you need something which is ultra clean. The supplies I've got here are both linear supplies. So this is a Corad 3305D. I've had this for about six years now, I think, actually. It does five amps. It's got three channels. And it does 30 volts, five amps on two outputs, and five volts at three amps on the other output. That's fixed. That's always on. The other two are switchable and adjustable. So this is always 5 volts, 3 amps, regardless of what you do. It doesn't matter what you do, that's what it is, it's always on. Um, but those are the ones which are controllable. And so this is a linear power supply, which means it's very clean compared to a switch mode. Switch mode supplies, because they're switching electronically, they can be quite noisy outputs. And for the things I'm doing here, I like a nice clean power supply to make sure I'm not introducing noise into whatever I'm working on. Or sometimes I'm substituting a power supply with my bench supply and testing circuitry on the bench and I need to make sure that what I'm testing is actually correct that I'm just seeing noise from a power supply thinking it could be from the device I'm trying to work on so I need clean supplies so I use linear power supplies and these are controllable you can actually set these up in series or parallel configuration as well because it's, they're actually isolated supplies so if you want to you can daisy chain them put them in series you can actually you know, get 60 volts or 5 amps or you can put them in parallel and get 30 volts or 10 amps that kind of thing so those are sort of options you can do with this particular power supply this is my Siglent SPD1168X, which is a 16 volt, 8 amp power supply. This has got a different feature set to this. This is all controllable by software as well, so you can use your computer to access it, look at graphing and that sort of thing. It does have graphing built in as well, so when it's active you can actually see what it's doing. And it's got built in IP address stuff and controlling like that. So it's got all kinds of little options. It's also got voltage sensing, which is built in sensing, it's on the front. What it sees internally is what it gets. This has got sense terminals on it. So if you actually want to test for a higher current and you want to hook up for accuracy, you can actually hook those up to your device at the device end so then you're not trying to measure and deal with voltage drop through the cables and stuff like that. And it's also got decent displays as well for voltage and current. And it's all controllable and controllable from software as well on a PC or Mac. I've actually written some software scripts for this particular power supply in Test Controller, which is a Java-based program which is available on the Bell forum some guy, um, HKJ, and he's written that, and it allows people to make your own definition. So if you've got a device and you don't have a definition within that software, you can make your own device definition file for your device and supply it on the EV book form, and he will add it into the next release. So anybody else will also benefit from that too. I've done a few definition files for different things, so this is one of the things I've done one for. Yeah, it's a really good power supply. But having a good power supply is really important. Up there, I've got a switch mode power supply which I really use. That's very noisy compared to these. And that's very about the 30 volts. I think it does 3 amps. I think it's something like that. It might be 5 amps. I can't remember. But that's a very noisy supply. Actually, it also generates a lot of EMI. So a lot of electromagnetic noise is radiated from the device. So I don't use that one very often. It was actually used basically for my lighting here, which... Since I've upgraded my lighting over the years, I haven't really needed to use it much, so it's still sitting up there anyway. Also easy for my rubidium standard, because it doesn't really matter so much from that. Yes, power supplies, very important. Again, as I've been saying so far, and we will continue to say, buy the best you can. A linear power supply is much more expensive than a switch mode. If a switch mode is all you can afford, that's fine. Get a switch mode. No reason why you can't do that. Just be aware that it could be noisy. And that may cause you some problems, like if you're trying to use an oscilloscope or something later on, you might see noise from your power supply. If you're going to afford to get a linear, get a linear power supply. Even if you only get a single channel linear power supply, it doesn't have to be one like these modern ones. You can get these older types. You know, There's lots of old power supplies on eBay, and they're really cheap. The dial indicators instead of LED displays or whatever. Old school stuff, they will probably still work fine. You might have to put some new capacitors in them, but it's going to be better than a switch mode in most cases. Switch modes have the advantage of being smaller, lighter, and potentially higher currents. So that's the, the trade-off there, you know. Do you want more capability or do you want cleaner supply? The sort of things you have to consider as well. I personally recommend getting linear supplies if you can afford to get them, and if you can get one which does the configuration you want. I'd certainly recommend two channels at least, definitely isolated supplies from each other, so you can configure them any way you want. But sometimes you want to do a push-pull supply, you want to need to do, say, a plus and minus 15 volt rail with a common zero volt. Which, in this case, with a isolated supply such as this, because both the outputs are isolated from each other, you're going to stick them together in series, 
and you can generate a plus or minus 15 volt supply. You can do that sort of thing with these, it gives you those options. The advantage of this kind of power supply, the Siglent one, it's also other ones that Siglent do, they do a whole range of different ones, from this one here to higher voltage, lower currents, and even things a bit like this, you know, multi-channel, three-channel version of this, they do all these different versions. This gives you the advantage that you can actually track the current. So as you're using a load, you can actually see what the load is do doing and what it's drawing from the power supply, which can be really handy if you're trying to troubleshoot something or trying to see how a circuit's behaving or trying to estimate its power usage. It's going to be a battery-powered product. You may be able to look at the actual current usage on the graphing and see what it ends up being, what it peaks up to and that sort of stuff. It's really handy for that. So if you've got these more modern ones, which have got interfaces to computers, you can do all sorts of complex stuff with them. But as a beginner, you probably don't need that. You may do. You may want to experiment with that. In this case, go for something more modern like this. But if you don't need to do that sort of thing, you can get away with an older style linear power supply. It will work just fine. Check out the playlist right there for the rest of the tools video series. There's a playlist here that YouTube thinks you should watch. Here is a subscribe link, which I think you should click on so you subscribe and see the rest of the videos and all the other stuff I do, all the repairs and what have you. And over here is a Patreon support link if you want to help support the channel and help me make more content. Thanks for watching. Bye.